Okay, welcome everybody to another episode of Junior Resource Investing. This is a bit of a, a news update uh, interview here. I have Ewan Webster from Thesis Gold, and they've got some news released this morning that I thought Ewan should come on and just chat with me quickly about. Uh, before I kind of start grilling him, though, of course, always your standard disclaimers, right? Blue sky uh, discussions and, and forward-looking statements, and we are not your financial advisors. Full disclaimer, of course, are in the YouTube notes. But uh, yeah, you and you, your company, Thesis, you've released uh, your new fresh global mineral resource estimate here today, which is pretty exciting. Not every day you get a global MRE released in a tier one jurisdiction like BC. Uh, so we're at almost 5 million ounces, 4.7, give or take to be precise, of high grade gold and silver. Uh, I'm going to run through just a couple of bo- bo- uh, the numbers that maybe stand out to me as exciting or important. Uh, 32% more uh, gold equivalent ounces. There's lots of high-grade optionality, which I think we'll get into later. We'll chat about 75-25 split gold-silver, which I like. I always like to see a nice little silver kicker like that because that can come in handy down the road with uh, non-dilutive financing options. And at 4 million ounces of, of M&I, so you have about 700,000 of inferred, but at 4 million ounces m and you're getting valued at about $30 an ounce Canadian, uh, which, of course, doesn't account for the 700,000 of inferred and the oodles of, of uh, further exploration that the potential that Ranch has. Uh, is there anything, maybe that kind of basic intro, you and uh, anything I missed before we get into it? No, I think that was a great summary, Matthew. Yeah, it's been a it's been a long time in the the making getting to this point. With you know, started last year in twenty twenty three with the you know forty three thousand forty five thousand meters of drilling across both projects. It was very strategically planned, and I think you know that drilling certainly met our objectives, and it's translated into the success of this uh, new updated MRE across both projects. So yeah, very exciting time for us. Yeah, I mean, five million ounces, that's nothing to sniff at. That's obviously very impressive, give or take, right? Five million ounces, high grade, great jurisdiction. Um, I guess, you know, maybe I'm, I am curious to see how the market responds. We're recording this prior to market open. Uh, you know, you were guiding for five-ish million ounces, which you did reach. And I want to preface this by saying, I mean, one, obviously even 4.7 is a very impressive number for if anybody doesn't get that, then you should. Uh, and I think also sometimes the market gets hung up unnecessarily on, on round numbers. I mean, there really isn't a huge material difference between 5 million and 4.7, right? So long as the reason there's a discrepancy isn't, you know, barren holes or bad geology, which isn't the case here. Uh, you know, but I guess it, it, this is such a market where, and even even when you come close to reaching a target, it, well, I guess anything but the best news is kind of punished by this market. So maybe, I mean, maybe the first question I get it's going to be maybe more of a tough one for you versus just like, let's talk about how great this release is. But, you know, do you want to discuss maybe why, right? You were guiding for around 5 million. Uh, is there a why, but why the number isn't a little higher? Is it a matter of just needing tighter space to get to inferred? Is it a matter of one of your ranch targets or zones uh, not coming good quickly enough and needing just a few more holes to really figure out? Or is it just kind of, you know, the geology gods and let's not get too hung up on this. This is just getting points on the board for the for the resource estimate, the PEA and future drilling will kind of cure what ails us. Yeah, so um, I think maybe a little bit of all of the above. Um, you know, it's ranch, um, it, it's maiden resource at ranch. And it, I'd say, you know, I was probably anticipating a bit, you know, a bit more ounces out of ranch. Um, and your point about inferred ounces of drill space, and really that kind of nailed it. I mean, through the thesis corridor, um, I think if we, you know, because last year we were hoping to do 30,000 meters of drilling at ranch. We only ended up completing 18,000 meters. And we cut the program short in the fall just because of market conditions at the time were, were pretty bad. Um, and, you know, so we didn't quite get as much done as we'd hoped to do. Um, and I think that just didn't allow us to connect as well as we'd have liked thesis two with thesis three and um, and bingo. And, you know, I think that's where we probably lost a few hundred thousand ounces. But as, as you know, as we've talked about this before, Matthew, and a few weeks ago, we kind of went through and documented what the successes were on the ranch project and mm. where we see the potential going forward. And I think that's still very valid. I mean, um, I very much see this as a starting point. This uh, 4.7 million ounces that we have, you know, it's it's by no means the end of the, the story here. Um, it, lawyers, all the mineralization is, is open at depth, uh, Jukes Ridge and Cliff Creek, and then at Ranch, um, basically every zone there is, is open for expansion. And it's really just a question of, you know, how many programs or what the size of the program, sorry, is this year will kind of dictate 
how many more ounces we're, we're able to add as we continue to, to grow and expand this deposit. So just to reiterate again, yeah, I think very much a starting point and uh, there's, a, there's many, many ounces ahead. And I think, you know, I, I've said to you before that I believe that Ranch is um, is just as much potential as lawyers. And given that we're about four million ounces of lawyers now, I still very much believe that's the case. Um, the the size of the epithermal system at Ranch is genuinely impressive, and we've really just scratched the surface there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, scratch yeah, scratch the surface absolutely. Uh, and maybe I'll ask. This is a decent maybe follow up to that. Just so people can kind of get it wrapped around their heads about you know what it took to get to here, and then maybe start to extrapolate or infer about where it might take what it might take to get to you know higher targets or higher numbers as we go. But can you just give a you know brief or rough? I mean, how many majors went into lawyers? Because you upgraded it almost totally to M and I. I think it's ninety five percent or so M and I now, uh, and you got it to and you uh, still managed to add a half million ounces to get to four million. So how many majors went into lawyers to have that happen? And then you just said 18,000 meters into ranch to get 700,000 inferred or no, it's about half and half, right? 300,000 indicated and 400,000 inferred, give or take. But can you just kind of maybe add to that conversation a bit? Yeah, for sure. So it's a little bit more complicated than that. And that it, uh, so at ranch, we've now completed about 70,000 meters of drilling across uh, the whole project. So that's not including the, just the resource zones. I mean, we've been pretty diligent about making sure that we are drilling in the areas that we're going to add ounces and contribute to this but at the same time working on that pipeline of new targets like steve and and jk um and then also testing new exploration targets where we're looking to make deliveries to, uh, discoveries so not all of those ounces are, have made it in um i i don't know off the top of my head but let's let's say about fifty thousand meters of that drilling has gone into delivering the seven hundred thousand ounces then uh on the lawyers project it very much so twenty four thousand meters of drilling completed last year. It was all deep drilling going towards defining what will be that mineable underground resource in the upcoming PEA. But um, yeah, we added about half a million ounces of uh, um, with that drilling. And that, I mean, that really just speaks to how good the continuity of the mineralization is in the lawyers project. And it's just a very robust, very predictable mineralizing system. And I guess, I mean, I want to focus on on Ranch because, I mean, that's the, the blue sky of this whole project. And obviously, and not to undermine lawyers, it's a it's a heck of a project too. But, I mean, or former project, heck of a heck of a tra- target for you guys. I'm still stuck in the, the before and after of the uh, amalgamation with you and benchmark a bit. So I apologize. I'm trying to bounce through. I wanted to just talk about, yeah, here. Do you want to just talk maybe a bit about, I mean, Maybe just walk us through the results a bit, right? And let's talk about Ranch first, right? I mean, um, we can obviously read the numbers ourselves easily enough, uh, but maybe do you want to talk about some, you know, hidden advantages or positives that you want to point out too? And here we'll talk about Ranch and its starter pits in particular. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the, at Ranch, we always knew that it was higher grade and that global grade at Ranch is held in there really nicely. I mean, through all the zones, the, the global grade's above two grams. So fantastic. Um but to your point about starter pitch, I mean, you can see the different zones there and what's went into contributing towards the resource. Um, the bulk of the mineralization coming from Bonanza Ridge and the Thesis Corridor, uh, BV, JK and Bonanza South on there. You know, we're really just getting going on those zones and they contributed such a minor amount to the resource. It was more so just to demonstrate that uh, these are up and coming targets and, and still need a lot of work, but we think they're going to contribute significantly over time. Um, but in those key core zones um, that you can see, um, if you, if you, so the cutoff grade for the global resource in the open pits was about 0.4 grams. Um, and that gives us just over 300,000 ounces in MI, so a lot of confidence there. And then about 340,000 ounces in the inferred category. If you increase that cutoff grade to about a gram and a half, you virtually lose hardly any ounces. I think it's about 60,000 ounces maybe in M&I and it's sorry, about 40,000 ounces in M&I. And then it's maybe 60,000 ounces in the inferred category. So lose a hundred thousand ounces, but what it does to the grade is drive it from effectively two grams uh, up to, you know, probably a a uh, blended grade of 3.2 grams. Um, so, you know, that's effectively your starter pit. All of these ounces are right at surface. So you're looking at half a million ounces at over three grams. And 
you know, we, we've talked about this before, but the, conceptually that is what you'll see in the PEA with high grade ounces right at surface with a minimal strip that will drive the early years and the, the, the economics of the upcoming PEA. So from this standpoint, it, that drilling really um, met its objective there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have that that chart up, and I've I've monkeyed with it a bit to help you see the 0.4 cutoff that they've modeled it on, and then what happens if you take it to 1.5, which echoes what you just said, right? I mean, you yeah. cut your tonnage in half, you you front load all those ounces into you know the very early years, and that of course still help as you said helps drive those economics. Uh, that's something that we've discussed previously on 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 the show when we come on is is your attempt to start with an underground pit at uh, sorry underground. <clears throat> uh, underground mine at, at lawyers to, to, again, help improve those kind of benchmark economics. I'll just skip to here and maybe I'll ask you, we were talking about this kind of before recording, right, about, uh, you know, this number isn't a perfect uh, de uh, description or, or discussion as to what that actual underground mine might look like in terms of balances. But can you just discuss maybe what you managed to pull off or what you accomplished with that drilling in, in this uh, campaign as well? Yeah, definitely. So the, the 24,000 meters of drilling at, at Lawyers was all focused at Jukes Ridge and Cliff Creek. And it was all about drilling deep below what the, the pit shells were in the previous PEA to kind of expand that footprint and to develop as a conceptual uh, underground mining scenario. And um, in the resource, you can see here at the, using a cutoff grade of about one and a half grams, um, indicated and inferred, we're looking at about 264,000 ounces at, um, you know, what the gold equivalent grade there is probably just about three grams on average, let's say. However, the pits now at uh, both Cliff Creek and Duke's Ridge, they're, they're pulling down to about 400 meters. And there's very few open pits pulled to, that, pulled to those kind of depths. But in the resource, you know, when we, we use 1850 as the gold grade for the pit shell, all that, all that it does is try and scavenge as many ounces as it can. And it will just say, this is still economic, this is still economic, and keep driving deeper. However, once you apply um, CapEx to that, once you start thinking about the economics, it, that no longer makes sense. And I think what, what you see in the PEA is a lot of trade-off studies that will I presume will hope will, will basically move the base of the pit upwards, um, so those underground ounces are going to increase substantially, and I'd say that the grade will probably improve as a result of that because it's going to go in there. It's going to try and cherry pick the highest grade ounces um, to help feed the early years of the mine life. So I think base of the pits will come up, strip uh, ratio will reduce, waste will reduce. And we're going to add higher grade ounces very early on in the mine life. So I'd say these numbers that you can see here are not reflective of what the actual underground ounces will be. And we have no control over that. It's, as I said, it's just the pit and the model just driving to, to acquire all of those ounces that it, it determines are economic without any capital costs applied to it. So mm. um, idea being at ranch and the underground provide the early years feed to uh, the mill. And I think we're the, very much still on track for that. And today's numbers, you know, this, they can start and point that demonstrate that. Mm -hmm. And that's, well, again, I, I like there's lots of optionality. You aren't kind of married to a single path forward. You have these kind of high grade ounces that you can target in terms of your, your pit steps and your pit plan. And, and you can, uh, at ranch and then of course you also have at, at lawyers here i'll try to bounce around here with visuals a bit for people and then of course within the lawyers like you said that under, underground option and again i mean this has been made before on the show but again just you know this is a good example a good visual of the topography and how you get that lateral uh, you can you can attack that underground mine laterally which is of course a huge advantage in terms of economics as well um a couple just a couple more questions for you you and i mean maybe this is kind of getting back to maybe what i was driving at with the you know meters drilled versus ounces gain sort of thing maybe sort of an expiration target style update if you can i mean i'm going to guess going back to ranch here now that uh, there are you know probably a few targets or more than a few targets quite a few targets probably all of them right that just need more drills to continue to get upgraded um you know if we you know in some sort of arbitrary hypothetical 2024 campaign which you haven't released yet and I'll ask you about that in a second. Uh, but you know, how many how many holes or meters 
make, you know, if we're talking just a made up number of, you know, 20,000 meters or so, or you, you pick the number, if you have one in your mind, how many meters are needed to upgrade how many ounces, if that kind of makes sense as a, as a vague question. Yeah. And it's a pretty challenging one to answer, honestly. Um, you know, if this was to some big homogeneous porphyry body that, uh, that would be, that would be a pretty feasible question to answer here. Um, you know, because we have variability in grade and faults here and there, it, uh, it becomes a bit trickier. Um, so I, I, th I think that's going to be a difficult one to answer. I, I don't know that I have a good answer for you on that. Um, the other thing that you have to consider as well is that, um, you know, the drilling that we've completed in this, this MRE, that will, that will form the foundation for the PEA. As we go to pre-fees, um, you know, post-PEA, to make it into the pre-feasibility study, everything has to be converted to M&I, basically. So there'll be a certain element of that. And as you can see from the today's MRE, the lion's share, as you say, 85 plus percent of the resource is already in um, the M&I category. So the nice thing is we don't have to go out and do a 100,000 meter infill program. And that what that means for shareholders is, you know, we don't have to go out and raise the capital to do that. So it's going to be much less dilutive going forward. And it just means that there's a lot of confidence in this resource and subsequently in the PEA. But, you know, to get back to your point, um, I think the, the, the challenge is kind of trying to balance some of that infill with continuing to expand the known zones of mineralization, but, and probably in inferred, because I think at this point, what we're trying to do is really demonstrate how big can how big can we get here you know what is the real potential at ranch uh, you know I, and as i said before all the focus is going to be at ranch really because we're just going to get a lot more bang for our buck otherwise we're drilling 600 meter holes at lawyers to to continue extend the depth which is pretty costly so i think the focus will be at ranch that's still very much our plan and um you know it, it'll be a combination of some infill some expansion and also i still want to test new targets, really demonstrate that, you know, we have a huge epithermal field here. We have a lot of targets and I think we're going to continue to make discoveries. So um, although I can't give you exact numbers, that's the conceptual idea as, how, as to how we're approaching this going forward. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I ask you uh, some iteration of this question every time I have you on, because I think it is a, that interesting kind of uh, one of the, that industry, what makes part of thesis unique is this combination of advanced PA stage, you know, you could progress PFS with some of the data you already have and still a heck of a lot of blue sky left. And so how do you, how do you balance that? Right. I mean, like you said, you have to get to indicated and fur isn't good enough. So how do you balance, you know, that desire to continue to drive the project forward to PFS stage uh, with, uh, with, you know, knowing that there's still hundreds of thousands, if not millions of ounces that are kind of at your fingertips. I mean, what's, what's the balancing act there? Can you just, I mean, you know, even, I mean, whatever, I'm not sure what angle or, or what, what avenue you want to approach this from, but I mean, you know, you know, what are the conversations that have at the board level about how to, what the philosophy is or, you know, what's your personal take on, on how to balance that? And yeah, it's a good question. And I think ultimately the, the simple answer is that we do both in tandem, basically. I mean, I think we've got a, you know, we're going to continue down the path of work, doing the baseline work. That's going to be hopefully complete by the end of this year, pretty close to it anyway. And that will form the foundation for beginning the EA process and, you know, future economic studies. But in, in, in tandem with that, you also want to determine or try and realize what the full potential of the project is. I mean, ultimately, that's how we we get, um, you know, we realize the, 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 the better uh, gains here. And... You know, that then has to be paired with just ongoing drilling, ongoing exploration drilling. Um, so I, I think it's a combination of both. And I think Marathon, um, they did a good job of that as well. You know, they, they, I can't remember, is it, I can't remember the name of the deposit. I think it was Barry or Barry, but basically that was incorporated into their studies at a later date and was still the kind of focus of exploration as they were going down the permitting path. So, I mean, I envision something similar to that, to be honest, where, sure, some of these zones are, are, you know, not in the resource yet. They won't be in the PEA, but showing a lot of potential. And I want to keep realizing that as we move forward. Mm -hmm. 
No, fair enough. And it's yeah, not a not a concrete sort of quantitative answer. Just yeah, I always like I say, can't help but ask. It seems um, sure. maybe I'll, uh, I'll I'll just a couple of questions left here. We'll keep it short and sweet. Maybe just a chance for you to kind of you know, in terms of the that negative honesty that maybe people like to see from executives. You know, obviously we'll focus on ranch here because that's where most of your kind of exploration, discovery, drilling, well, all of it was happening. Um, but uh, is there anywhere that maybe targets didn't come as come out as good as you were hoping, or or you know, or a bit more challenging or complex in terms of what you saw in twenty twenty three? I I think really, um, you know, the thesis corridor as we talked about, um, you can see this is a great slide to to, to, to basically illustrate um, what we were talking about earlier, where you see thesis two, you see thesis three in the middle, and then bingo at the you know the the northern end there, and. You know, those pits basically butt up right against each other, but we don't have the drilling between them to kind of start linking to the, them together. And maybe they don't link together, they're offset by different structures, but we just don't have that drill density yet to be able to confirm uh, that and expand them, basically. Um, but at the same time, I'd say that a lot of the most successful drilling uh, we did this year at Ranch was from that thesis corridor. I mean, the bingo zone grew substantially. We've discovered that eastern parallel trend um, that's all in fair ounces and, you know, cause we, we've really just started getting going on that and, but it's very high grade mineralization rate of surface. And then I think we had that hole at the Southern end of thesis two, 60 odd meters, uh, over four grams gold. Um, so this system, you know, on, on paper there looks about one and a half kilometers in length with a bunch of infill work to do. And it's got potential to expand the depth, but it's very much open a long strike as well. And you can kind of see from the topography there with those valleys and gullies uh, extended from the Southern end of it. That's basically just one of these big structures and big faults that extends right through there. And it, it goes for about three kilometers in length. So we've really only tested a fraction of it at this point. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, it showed a lot of promise through the thesis corridor, but it was also kind of our most challenging part uh, to convert ounces into the MRE. Hmm. No, interesting. Thank you. I and mean, honestly, that, that kind of does it. I'll just ask a couple of quick questions just because we know there's, that there's work, up, work upcoming work outstanding that's you know, potentially imminent. I mean, PA is Q3, so a few months away. But I mean, is there a, when can we expect maybe MET work to, to be released? I'd say network, so advanced network, late May, early June. And you can probably see in the resource here that um, in the press release, the recoveries are 92% for gold yeah. that we're using and 88% for silver. And that's silver recoveries have come up a long, long way from what we were initially looking at in law, at lawyers. And that is because of the addition of a flotation circuit to it. So initial, and we don't have final results yet, but our feedback from the metallurgist is that silver recoveries have improved substantially, um, which will have a huge impact on the economics again, especially as you pointed out earlier, given that they're kind of 25% of the resource value for gold equivalent ounces. I mean, we've, we're 92 million ounces of silver on the project, which is huge. I mean, that's bigger than some standalone silver uh, resources. And I think the market just doesn't uh, quite get that either. Um, so a lot of value there, as you said as well, you know, I mean, if we go down the, the permanent path and we're looking at building this, it does provide opportunity for um, financial optionality. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so silver recoveries have improved a lot. There's substantial silver ounces there. Yeah, and that's right. It was 92 and 90 on the two different projects and 88 with silver. Is, yeah, the, reading the fine print always always is a nice touch. Maybe, and then, so I mean, I, this is going to be one where I can't expect to, clean and direct answer but uh same thing any any sneak preview or or at least a demonstration of timeline when we might expect to see a 2024 drill program announcement um it will be coming shortly yeah i mean right now we're going through a number of strategy sessions internally um just to really work out what that program is going to look like for this year what we want to achieve um, and not only for this year, but, you know, what our plan is for the next 12 to 18 and longer uh, months. Um, and, and that, in part, will dictate what the summer's program will look like. But rest assured, you know, we'll get that news out as soon as we decide on something. But as you can imagine, we've had our hands pretty full with uh, trying to get yeah. the news here over the line. Yeah. yeah, always a stressful time, right? Yeah, QPs back and forth, as we talked about offline there. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I, I mean, obviously, good to know. I know at, some, at one point you were debating informally about... 
whether more drilling is to be had. I think that, I mean, I, I'm biased, but I think more drilling is the right answer. So it's good to hear yeah. that. Uh, you and any, I mean, this is, I'll, I'll call it here. Anything else that I missed that maybe you wanted to emphasize for people? No, I mean, I think the closing points would be that, uh, you know, for me, one of the huge takeaways from this resource is, sure, it's 4.7 million ounces, but 4 million ounces of that is in the M&I category. So, I mean, it's really well understood and it's at one and a half grams, over one and a half grams in the open pit. Um, and it's, you know, that represents 85% of those total ounces and... In addition to that, as we talked about, just the silver component, you know, it, it often goes overlooked, but it adds a substantial amount of value. And then really the kind of third part is just that, again, this is very much a starting point for us. Um, I foresee, you know, significant growth potential as we go forward here. And I think all today's results are extremely positive um, for the forthcoming PEA. I mean, we've we added about 1.2 million ounces to the previous resource at three and a half million. Um, but those are extremely valuable ounces that we've added. Um, you know, it's deep ounces that will go into mineable, uh, early mineable resource and high grade startup as a ranch. And so it's, it's strategic ounces that are definitely going to have a material impact on the economic study here. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm very excited to see the MR, the PEA rather. I can't help but expect that maybe the market might be a little surprised at what you've managed to kind of marry together there with uh, with uh, lawyers and ranch. And yeah, it looks everything sounds good. Great, great, great uh, news release. Positive stuff. And you and thanks for your time. And I'm sure we'll chat again soon. Pleasure, Matthew. Thanks for having me on again. Thanks, Ethan.